Dividend shares will dole out cash each year on top of whatever return you might make if the company share price goes up. It's really passive income. So it's great if you're looking for more income streams or you're retiring. This approach is also ages old and it's been shown to lead to some really strong returns if done properly. This video is a step-by-step -step guide to how it all works and how you go about dividend investing. I'm Marcus De Silva. And I'm Simon Longfellow. Savings accounts don't give you anything back. Literally none of them right now beat inflation in the UK. Investing is the only way to grow what you have. Now, we've both worked in investing for a fair amount of time and we've discovered some really simple ways for lots of everyday people to get involved in the stock market without needing too much money or taking too much risk. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel and don't forget to turn on notifications. We post new videos every Monday and if you do comment below if you have any questions, we promise to reply. So today we're going to go through step by step how to invest in shares that pay out a dividend, some income. And it's going to be really easy. You could be up and running with investing in 20 minutes. Now a lot of people think investing is just too complicated to get going and it really needn't be that way. Please like the video so we can get this message out further and stick around to the end because Marcus will give you a strategy he's been using for years that's made him good money over the long term. Now dividends are awesome because you can buy a dividend stock, that's an income paying stock, and just sit back, chillax, watch some Netflix, and they will pay you a certain amount each year. Now a company pays a dividend because it's made some profits and its board of directors have decided to give some of those profits back to shareholders. What's great about the strategy is it kicks out cash whilst at the same time its share price can continue to grow. So there's two aspects to the returns that you get when you invest in dividend stocks. The growth of the share price and the dividend yield you receive each year. And what we mean by yield is that it just expresses how big the dividend is relative to the share price. So if I had a stock that cost me 100p to buy and it pays out a 5p dividend, then it's on a 5% yield. So the next question you might ask is, which companies pay out a dividend? Well, generally, it tends to be the ones that have been around for a fair bit of time. They are fairly mature, much like Simon here, or a piece of Stilton. This means they tend to be amongst the larger stocks out there and slower growing than the more smaller, more nimble companies. Paying dividends means they've got to the stage where they are generating some tasty profits and perhaps have more money than there are quality projects to reinvest that money within the business. And so, therefore, they don't need to hoard sacks of cash and can hand back some to the shareholders. Some investors really like steady dividend paying stocks because it shows the company is confident in its future and its ability to continue generating profits, that the management team are really well disciplined with their finances and that it isn't wasting money on silly projects that aren't gonna add a lot of value to the company, like a vanity painting of the chairman for his office. So how are these dividends paid? Well, the board of directors will get together and decide how big the next dividend will be. And if they are regular dividends, this is usually quarterly, but they could also be paid monthly, semi-annually or annually. Sometimes they may even pay a special dividend, a one-off if they've suddenly got loads of cash that they don't need. For example, perhaps they've sold part of the business. One bit of jargon you need to be aware of is the ex-dividend date. You need to buy shares before the ex-div date in order to receive the next dividend. Okay, so where do you start? Well, the first thing to do is to select an investment platform and open an account. These are the major ones in the UK. 
don't forget, use an ISA. This is the same as any investing account really, but it comes protected from any form of tax. And this is super important to do. Helpfully, we have a video on ISAs. If you want to know more, check the link in the description. Once you have an account, you can start searching through the lists for different investment products, which include individual shares, as well as loads of funds, some run by fund managers and some not. So the next question might be is, shall I just go out and pick some dividend paying stocks then? We don't actually think this is the best way to invest for dividends because investing in individual stocks does take a lot of time and resources. We know experienced fund managers and they can spend two or three weeks analyzing a single stock. You really have to understand what the company does and how it does it and also have the ability to rummage through all of its finances to find out if it's solid and profitable and can defend those profits and continue paying dividends in the future. One problem, for example, is that you could go out and find the highest yielding stocks. Remember, we mentioned that earlier in the FTSE 100. That's the largest 100 companies in the UK, but be potentially deceived by those high yield. Remember, we said yield represents dividend as a function of the share price. So a yield might be high because the share price has plummeted. Now, that might be because the company isn't doing so well and therefore investors are going, I'm going to sell that stock. And of course, it could be about to cut that dividend if it's under pressure. This is why you really need to understand the business well. Second, individual stocks are quite risky as you are very exposed to whatever happens to that individual company. It could go bankrupt or it could need to just cut its dividend for a while for one reason or another. You could build a portfolio of eight or 10 stocks over time, perhaps to diversify some of those risks, but a fund that invests in income paying stocks would probably have nearer to say 50 stocks across a number of different business sectors. So they represent a very well diversified portfolio. We're gonna go through that next. So please stay tuned and like and subscribe the channel if you're enjoying what you're seeing. All said, if you do want to crack at investing in dividend stocks, one bit of info we quite like is this from AJ Bell, an investment platform. And it takes a look at dividends in the FTSE 100 and gives you lots of information, all the important data that you might need. And it also explains it quite well. How do you actually go about finding funds for dividend income then? Well, funds are arranged into sectors or just groups according to what they are trying to achieve. For dividend income, you are looking for sectors on your investment platform labelled as something like equity income. This is because shares are commonly called equities in the investment industry and there'll be a few different flavors and choices to make. One big decision will be where in the world do you want to be invested? You can get a US equity income fund, a UK equity income fund, a European one, a global one and so on. This just puts different fingers in different pies in case something drags a particular market down for a while. The UK market is actually very renowned for equity income because companies here are quite mature and they pay out a fair whack in dividends. But over the last few years, the UK market was dragged lower by Brexit uncertainty in the economy. So diversifying geographically is a smart move. Second is whether you want a fund run by an investment professional known as a fund manager or to use a fund that just mimics a particular group of companies. So for example, by just copying the FTSE 100, the largest 100 companies in the UK. Let's have a look at these two options. All right, let's start with funds that have a fund manager running them. Now a fund run by a fund manager comes with the advantage of an investment professional sifting through the market to find the best stocks to put into that fund so that it meets its objectives. But they come at a cost. You have to pay for the fund manager's time and services. Here you can see a page from AJ Bell of the UK equity income funds and the costs associated. And they tend to range from between 0.5% to 1.3%. 
There are two types of funds, funds and investment trusts. Don't worry, we have an animation on this that explains the difference, link in the bio. Now all the work I mentioned earlier, picking the right investments is obviously the advantage of using a fund manager, but there are a few downsides too. Funds that don't have a fund manager are much cheaper. So these lower costs will eat away at your returns far less. There's also the chance that the fund manager doesn't pick very good stocks, which Shay will do from time to time, and therefore the fund doesn't perform very well. And there are ways to get around this. You can choose a good fund. We have a video on this that goes through all the different criteria that you might need to look at. Check it out, link is in the bio again. So let's look at funds without a fund manager. These funds come with the advantage of basically being quite cheap. They simply mimic the index they are tracking, buying all the same stocks in all the same proportions. They're called names like ETFs, exchange traded funds, index trackers, and index funds. Now, if you're looking for equity income, there are trackers and ETFs that are tilted towards companies that pay strong dividends, that have a good yield, in other words. Here, you can see three available for UK equity income on AJ Bell and the cheaper costs relative to funds run by fund managers. Okay, as promised, a little bonus tip for investing in dividends and the strategy I use. So I've done dividend investing for years and I do have a strategy that's given me double digit returns in a year at times. Two things. First, if you're looking at a fund with a fund manager, take a look at investment trusts. We love them and they have a special feature called a revenue reserve. This is just a little rainy day pot and they can stash some of the dividends in the good years so that when things aren't so good and dividends get cut like they did during the pandemic the board can then reach into that pot and top up the income they pay out to investors this smooths the income you receive and makes it a bit more reliable second blend funds with and without fund managers so that you have the chance for good stock pickers to perform strongly, but also bring down the overall investment costs by having a blend of both with cheaper funds. One of the best pieces of advice with investing is mix things up. That's how you get rid of unnecessary risks. Okay, so in summary, shares pay out income in the form of dividends, and that gives us a chance to get paid while we wait for the share price to go somewhere. Secondly, investing in dividend shares is fraught with risks, but income-paying funds are a diversified way of doing this. Thirdly, you can open an account and get going in minutes. It's really not as complicated as you think. And lastly, use a blend. Have a look at investment trusts and income-tilted exchange-traded funds. Final thing to say is our magazine has lots of income ideas for equity income. It's free. Check it out in the bio. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.